I'm the underdog with the heroic card. I'm Aaron Jones Jr. I have to keep pushing for my kids. If I give up, what's that leave them with? Nothing. I have to understand that it's bigger than me. That it's not about me when I wake up and go to work. It's not about me when I'm reading and educate myself. It's not about me when I'm practicing my speeches. It's not about me. It's about my family. Hey, 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 you're now tuned in to Underdog Talk. I'm your host, Eric Jones Jr., and I have successful conversations with, uh, I have conversations with successful underdogs, <laughs> and today I have the plump queen from Queens, but now she stays in Georgia. How are you doing? I am awesome with the sauce on it. How are you doing, sir? Um, I'm good. I'm surprised I still have a voice. Uh, my son had a basketball game yesterday and I just got done recording another podcast. So my voice is a little sketchy. So after this one, I think I'm going to try to rest my voice. I don't know how to do that really, but I'm going to try. <laughs> oh, yeah. Busy. That's how you like it. Looking busy. Yep. So before we get into our conversation, uh, today's episode is brought to you by my own clothing brand, Christian Dewan. It's me and my son's. You use the promo code Underdog Talk, you get fifteen percent off. We got t-shirts, sweatshirts, and hoodies. Definitely gonna have more hoodies and sweatshirts because it's about to be fall. But you use that promo code, and Underdog is spelled U N D E R D A W G, and Talk. And the website is Christian Dewan. Um, Dewan is spelled D E J U A N dot com. So we have a successful underdog. We have Miss Plump Queen. So, you lost the arm, I right? Did. I did. How was life right before that? What was like? What was what was things looking like? What were you doing? What was going on before you know this tragedy happened to you? Uh, I was. I wouldn't even hold on. I wouldn't even say tragedy. This obstacle happened to you. Absolutely. Uh, well, I was trying to figure out life. Um, maybe about six months prior. Me and my mom wasn't getting along and um, I had decided to move. Well, no, she kicked me out and I decided to move with my my boyfriend at the time. I moved with him um, in PA because I'm from up north. Uh, he was from Jersey and I'm from New York. So we kind of met in the middle there and we couldn't find jobs. So we need to figure something out. So I stayed. I went to New York, stayed with my aunt. He moved somewhere else. And I got a job at an advertising and marketing company out in Long Island in um, Great Neck. So I was working 72 hours a week, six days a week. Um, Sundays were optional. I really wasn't taking care of myself. I was just on the grind trying to, you know, become an adult. I was 22 at the time. So trying to be an adult, left the nest. So let me do what I do. So I was working hard. Uh, all, of that, all that time we was working. And the individual that I was with actually was on her team. Um, that's the lady that I had into the accident with. It was right before Labor Day. And um, we did this great campaign and we wanted to have fun. 72 hours a week, you know what I'm saying? We wanted to do something. So went to the city, hung out, got back, and we were supposed to go to her house, made a detour. And yeah, this is what happened. We didn't make it back to her house. So that's the short version of it. So yeah, I was just trying to get my life together before this happened, really trying to find my direction. Mm. So you was young, mom's just like, hey, you gotta get up out of my crib. So I know, I remember being 22. So you young, you still trying to find life and then boom, this happens. So after this happens, I'm sure like throughout, how was the process when it happened? Like, what do you remember about that happening? And then like, what did they say? Like, you know, how did you find out everything? Because sometimes, you know, they don't tell you right away or did you lose your arm immediately? Something like that. Well, I lost my arm immediately, but I didn't know immediately. Um, mm. I do remember coming to a couple of times during the actual situation uh, when my friend woke up, she saw my arm off. So she tried to push me back into the car because the, I guess the car was leaning over or something like that. So I do remember that she had to slap me to kind of make me wake up so I can help her because I was definitely 260 pounds then. And she ain't nothing but a buck 50. You know what I'm saying? She got she got a big booty, but the rest of her body is small. So she needed some help kind of thing. So I remember that. 
And then I also remember, um, I'm going to assume I was in a helicopter, but I remember hearing the helicopter, seeing some white folk, you know what I'm saying, with these blue shirts on. So I figured those were the <laughs> ones. I remember that. And, um, and then when I woke up in the hospital, the nurse had to tell me that I lost my arm because I was looking for my friend. I didn't realize it was gone until she told me. So, mm. Yeah, I just, I figured because I'm up, I can see, I can talk. I really couldn't remember certain things, but I was awake enough. So I figured I was all right. That wasn't the case. Mm, I know that was tough. Like going through that process, you're like, all right, okay, I'm woke, I'm alive, I'm good. And then boom. So what was like your first reaction? Like when you found out and then like thinking to yourself, what the hell am I about to do with life? Well, my first words was, thank God I'm alive. That's what I said to the nurse. And um, ironically, <clears throat> I just kind of just fell into the whole, let me figure life out. I, You know, I really didn't take this as hard as, you know, everybody would have expected me to. I was just ready to figure it out. Like, this is what it is. I'm alive. You know, it could have been worse, I felt. So let me just figure this out. Uh, you know, me and my the guy, we're no longer together. He actually um, went with a woman that he met. You know what I'm saying? So wherever he is, he, he was with her. So I, it just, I just had to focus on myself. So where, I, where it seemed like everything was falling apart, I kind of just was like, I... I gotta figure out how to live life like this. So all that stuff is irrelevant. Let me just get this. And I healed in like two months. I was able to go to my brother's wedding in July. So this happened in May. I was at his, yeah, I was at his wedding in July. Mm. That that's 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 dope. Uh that you were you didn't look at it like, oh fuck, you know, like what the heck am I supposed to do? Cause like me being born with a disability, like it took time for me to realize like, hey, bro, your arm's not getting longer. You got to deal with what you got going on. Just go be the best version of yourself. And it was like it took time because, you know, you got people that they stare. Like you said, your dude that you was with left like people act different because you look different. But it's like I'm still the same person. I'm still whoever I was before this tragedy or, you know, I'm still the same person that out that if I had long arms or short arms, I'm still going to be the same person. And people overlook that. And so I commend you on that. Cause like, that's hard. Like you live in life. You like, you got both limbs and then boom, it's gone. And you like, okay, it's gone, but I'm not dead. Like I'm still able. And I love this, your shirt. Cause I'm looking at it and I see the arm and then I see the other one and it makes sense. And I was like, that's real dope. Like, I like because I know people that have disabilities or stuff like that. And they don't look at the same. They didn't been in an accident and they look at it like, oh, it's the end of the world or they want to be a victim now. So you said you was at your brother's wedding two months later. So how did you how was it getting back into life? Like, you know, going to work, doing the daily things of life, like after, you know, having this and then now you got to adjust. Well, I learned that I am very adaptive, um, which is a gift of mine. And I had a, your mind controls everything. So your perspective is what controls how you maneuver things. So for me, I've always been, I've always been a big girl. I always wore natural and, you know, I'm from New York. So growing up, that wasn't the attractive, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't attractive, you know what I'm saying? To the opposite sex when I was growing up. So people didn't like me because of the way I looked. They liked me because of my personality. All my friends, you know what I'm saying, hung around me because of who I was as a person. So it kind of helped me with the physical thing. Well, guys didn't like me before when I had two arms because I was fat. So <laughs> this really isn't kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's going to be the same thing. They still going to like my personality, though, as long as I keep my personality intact. I'm Gucci. That's been working for me. So that I kind of told myself that and let that work for me. And then I just worked on you know what I'm saying? What I needed to, I'm, I'm a very logical person. So I kind of just figured I, I know how to do certain things. So I just use my brain. All right. I used to tie my shoe before, so I know how to do it. So I just need to figure out, you know what I'm saying? I guess the aesthetics to, you know what I'm saying? To figure it out. And I was patient with myself. I didn't, I didn't try to compete with two armed people. 
I just mm. try to learn how to do what I, I just need to know how to do it by myself. So however I figure that out, that's how I'm going to do it. I'm not trying to do it just like you with two arms because I don't have two arms anymore. You know what I'm saying? I love, so, uh, yeah. I, I love that. I love that. Like, that's me. I don't, I am not trying to compete because, you know, you got two long arms. Like, I'm just being me. Like, oh, uh, that's that. Uh, I, I had something totally I was thinking about, and then that just wiped it out. Because, like, people don't realize, and that's for anybody. You shouldn't compare yourself to anybody because, oh, because their parents provided or because, oh, they, parent, they struggled. They Don't compare yourself to nobody and because nobody can compare, compare themselves to you. It's a lot of people um, that will be like, oh, I'm going through this, and I'd be like, that's cute. Uh, I got, I got these, these, ar these arms here and I got uh, nerve issues and I have pain every day, but I don't complain. Nobody ever know. Like only time I really say is like, I'm, you know, telling, talking on a podcast or something, but I, I, my, my neck, my back, my shoulders, it'd be hurting. And I'd be like, cause I got nerve problems and it's like, it sucks. Yeah. It sucks. It but you gotta keep, you gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. Cause if you don't keep going, you fell on yourself and people don't understand that's like hard, like making adjustments. So for me, I was always scared to drive a car, right? I don't know why. I just thought I wasn't able to drive a car. Got in the car. I'm like, oh, this is easy. Oh, I'm tuned in. And like you said, you just, okay, I know how to tie my shoe. I know how to do these things. So let me just make the adjustment. And that's what I had to do. I had to make adjustments in certain things. It's like the way I open a pop can or the way I open something might be different, than something, but it's going to get open. That's all that like, matters. That that's it, all that matters. That all that that it get open. That whatever happens. So I I love that. So as time went on, did you um did you have like how did work go? Did you go back to working where you was working at? Did you have to get a new go to a new field? Like what did that look like for you? Uh, what was interesting is in the hospital, the mm -hmm. place that I was working for. I guess I was doing such a great job. They actually asked me when I was coming back to work. And this is like the day after the accident. It was so weird. Um, but I felt like uh, my ancestors had that happen to me so I can stop working. I didn't have any business giving my talents and what I got going on to another company. I was supposed to build my own. And I feel like everything that happens to us for a reason. Had I had this not happened to me, I'd have been a faithful, you know what I'm saying, worker. And I probably would have got screwed down the road because a lot of my coworkers did. So it almost like stopped me from going that route to honestly change to what I'm doing now. My whole platform is based on the fact that I'm an amputee and I'm using my life to show other people that they can live a fulfilling life. They can start a business. They can go back to work. They can do the things that they love and live a good life regardless of what happens to them. So that was my purpose. So that's what I've been doing. That's why you're a successful underdog. And like you said, certain stuff is meant to happen. We don't realize. We like, oh, my God, what just God, really? Really? And then you see it's like, boom, it took me 30 years to figure out why my arms. I was born the way I was. And it was like I had to go through all that. So, I, oh, I get it. I, now I got to go back and talk to a younger me, which is going to help the younger generation, which is why I'm a teacher, because I never liked school. I didn't do great in school. I knew how to pass and now I'm teaching kids and it's like, okay, I get it, God. I, I get, I get what you, and it's like, it's yeah. so eye opening when you get it. It's like, wow. It is. It is. It's like, man, cause sometimes people like all of us have a gift. You had the gift that you had before your arm got amputated, but it took for your arm to get amputated for you to unleash your gift. That's cause right. like you said, you would have been going to a job, going to a job. And like I, like I was just talking to the lady before it's like, People be like, oh, I'm I'm a manager. I'm this, I'm that. But guess what? You still work at a job. And guess what? They don't like you. You said something wrong to an employee that they that's their favorite. Adios. Now what you going to do? That's and exactly. it's, oh, I got this degree. I got that. That's cool. But can you go to the jungle and, and come out? You let can't. Me, let, let me give you an example. Nothing, nothing. Everything is a redirection. I don't believe in failures. I don't believe in things don't go right. Things go exactly the way they're supposed to. I tried to be a medical biller and coder and a medical assistant in 2012. You know what I'm saying? So they allowed me to go into the program. 
but they knew they wasn't going to let me clap past the clinicals because I would have to do them manually. So they used me to get some bread. I was upset about that because, you know, I tried to go back to school, um, you know, trying to do this thing. I was getting great grades, but y'all not going to let me pass. So you wasting my time. Let's fast forward to 2019. No, 2020. COVID. See, had I became a medical assistant, that would have been about 15, 16 years worth of me being in the medical field. My whole life would be wrapped around the medical field. I would have compromised my health. Had I been in the medical field, I wasn't supposed to do that because I have real strong, um, you know, thoughts about my health. I'm a holistic. I use holistic um, measures to, to heal myself. I don't do vaccines and all that other jazz. And I see a lot of people, you know, what I'm saying because they might had a thought process about it or had an opinion. But because of their livelihood, they're certain they had to make certain choices. So once that happened, that was my click. Oh, that's why that happened. I'm grateful. So I don't ever question anything anymore. If it don't work out, it's for a reason. And that reason is for my good. And I hold on to that. Definitely. Like, I definitely understand that. Like, it's a job for me. So a lot of the, all the jobs I've ever had that's been long term is because I knew somebody. Like when they say it's not what you know, it's who you know. That's definitely me. So like temp jobs. You know, I could go to a job and they don't really, I wear a jacket or something. They really don't notice. And then all of a sudden they notice and then it's, oh, well, they, oh, you're not meeting quota or you're not this. And it's like, oh, okay, that's cool. And that's why, like, even as a kid, I was like, man, it's, I'm not going to be like, the end goal was I wasn't going to be working for somebody. And now, you know, I'm working towards that, even though I'm still an educator and I love working with kids, that's got something to do with it. But it's like, you can't let when you're when you have shortcomings or disadvantages, you can't allow other people to control what you got going because they'll they might. I don't really want to look at this person like that all the time or this or why do they have why do we have to make uh, accommodations for them or whatever the case may be. And then the company lets you go. And it's like, let's create whatever. And I love what you do. Like you telling people like it don't matter what didn't happen you know, you lost this, you lost that, you still can go out here and be great because you lost your arm, but you didn't lose your heart. You didn't lose your mind. You still had the things to able to operate like you're supposed to operate. So you said earlier, people didn't like you before you had one arm, basically. Now you only got one arm, kind of. And do they, how's dating life? How, what does that look, what did that look like? Like, how did that go for you? Like, what was it? Well, uh, 2009, I met my king, and this September will be 13 years that we've been together. Congratulations. Yeah, I, yeah, people like me now. I, it's, I've, I've actually grown into myself. I've learned confidence is really what y'all like. Because I, I done seen some people, some very unattractive, in my opinion, because beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Everybody, everybody, I can promise you, I learned that losing my arm. There's a whole community of people called amputee devotees. These are people who devote themselves to amputees. So they look at my stump like you would look at titties. And oh, I, wow. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird as fuck. It's weird. I, can I say that? Yeah, 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 It's it's weird, and um, but yeah, they they out there, they out here, and you know, the more I've grown into myself as a woman, you know, I'm yeah. If I wasn't in a relationship, I definitely have options. I, I'll say that I, I definitely have options, it, and it's more so about me just loving myself. And I I've lost a lot of weight because I take care of myself, and it's not necessarily for weight. I just want to live the most healthiest life that I can possibly be. I got a second chance at life. So I want to make sure, you know what I'm saying, that I'm living it right and live as long as I possibly can. And the only way to do that is to be healthy. And when you live a healthy life, you can't help but be beautiful. It brings out your natural beauty. So, yeah, the fellas is checking for me, but my king got it on lock. understand. And like the first one, the first thing you said was confidence. It's it, like that's me. Like when I walk in the room, I feel like the ground shake. Like 
I know, like, it don't matter, like, what woman, like, if I want to talk to her, I'm going to talk to her, whatever the case, like, my confidence is really high. Sometimes, you know, I have moments where I'm shy or I don't really want to be bothered with people, but for the, for the most part, like, I'm very confident, like, so I've always, like, when it comes to the ladies, I've always... I've always won in that department per se. <laughs> even, even though I got a, even, even though I got a divorce, I mean I've definitely been able to like you know because sometimes when you have a disability or you look different or whatever, you it might not be physical, it might be mental. It's hard to get people, and it's like like you said, uh, it's the confidence, it's being yourself, and that's what people like. Like it ain't even I wouldn't say it's it's the uh, being authentic. authentic. It's just being yourself. And being real and people love real, like no matter what you look like. Oh, OK, that's like it's crazy because like as I be in a dating field and like older, older women, like 40s, not so much 50s, but 40s and 50, close to 50s. They like, oh, I don't care about that. But like a younger chick might be like, I don't know. And it's like, OK, that's OK, whatever. That's you know, something. you missed out on a great guy. That's your fault. Whatever the case may be. But it's like it's different how people treat you. So I definitely understand if I ever settle down, I, I will hopefully settle down again. But I definitely have options until that time comes. So I definitely feel you on that one. So and congratulations on being married 13 years because marriage is not easy. I definitely understand. Well, let me clarify because people, mm -hmm. I am not legally married. Mm -hmm. I don't believe, honestly, in legal marriage when it comes down to the dynamics of a relationship. Mm -hmm. Business, yes. We live in a country, you know what I'm saying, where you know things are tied legally and all that. So for legal for legal stuff, yeah. Love, connection, family, no. Um, I love it. Yeah, because people are not possessions. The way marriage has been carried out in this country is truly made it where it's about, it's not a, love is a service. And most people get married because they want something from the other person, whether it be stability, you know, whether it be, I need you to love me, or you know what I'm saying? I need to look good. You know what I'm saying? I'm 25 years old, so I need to hurry up and have these kids or, you know, what whatever it is. And this is why divorce is on the all time high. I want people, my king, I love him 13 years, but if something happens tomorrow and his life or his journey leads him away from me, I love him enough to allow him to go on and do what he need to do because he wasn't born to love me. That's not his purpose. It, it's a bonus. It's a part of it, but that is not his purpose. We are all born as individuals with our own journey and our own things to fulfill. So I... The, uh, the possession thing I, I don't I, I don't like. I don't want nobody that don't want to be with me. I should ha not have to force you. No piece of paper should have to force you to, you know, to treat me the way that I, I deserve to be treated. That should be voluntary. So, so far for 13 years, we have both decided that we are what we want. No, uh, no outside forces or thoughts or processes or none of that. You know, I'm building this empire. I'm going to build a trust. His name going to be on it. You see what I'm saying? So there's ways for you to take care of the people that you love without that. Like I said, I was telling you earlier, I watched my cousin go through a divorce. I don't know what your experience is. I can't do it. Yeah, it, mine wasn't horrible. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely understand what you're saying um have been married and then how the society makes marriage look like everything you saying is in a marriage but then it's like i get what i get what you're saying because some people when they hear it they go and look at it and that's your opinion you i mean you've been successfully whatever you call it whatever title whatever name you want to it's been successful for 13 years so yeah. it's nobody else is yeah. no yes. connect because like you like because Cause you said some real, you said some real stuff. Like we're not, you don't, you don't have to love. If I don't love myself, I can't expect nobody else to love me. And that's where people go wrong. Oh, I need him. I need, you don't need, that's a bonus in your life. Cause if you, cause listen, I could sit in here and crack up, entertain myself. I don't need nobody in here with me. And I'm good with that. I can, I'm gonna go to sleep and wake up 
huh, happy. I ain't like, oh my God, I didn't, oh my, nobody text me today. Oh, no, I don't need that. And I love myself. And I had to learn that. That's why, I, to be honest, that's why we didn't love ourselves at the time. Uh, that's why our marriage wasn't successful because you're expecting somebody to do something, but you're not even doing it with yourself. If you can't go take yourself out to eat, go on a date, make yourself happy, why do you think uh, John posted or why you think uh, Shaquilla posted, whatever? You Nobody supposed to make you happy but you. And once you make you happy, like you said, oh, are you don't mess with me no more? That's cool. I'm good. I was good before you came. I'm, I'm going to be good after you come. You know, it's going to sting a little bit. You know, it's going to take a little time to get over it, whatever. But I'm good because I love – and it's kind of like basketball. I don't know if you watch basketball. It's like the Warriors. They won before KD. Oh, it was a bonus. He was here, KD. You won two rings, but you left. Guess what happened when you left? We still win again because I'm good with or without you. And it's just that simple when you love yourself. Like – it makes sense how some people now, like I know some people have been together for a minute and it makes sense. Like you don't really need all that, but I'm old school. I was in the church. So I, you know, some stuff I still go by, but I don't really, I ain't in the church like that. Like I understand that my relationship with God is me. I ain't got nothing to do with you. Ain't got nothing to do with what you think the Bible say or whatever the case. So I definitely understand what you're saying in, in that, that factor. So. Yeah, let's talk about your business. Let's talk about your brand because we didn't, we, we saw you, you know, okay, I'm figuring out life, bam, you know, arm gone. Now you're figuring stuff out. You've been with, uh, you have children? No, not yet. Not no yet. children. Okay. Uh, so you, you've you been with the same person, successful relationship. Uh, You figured out, yeah, I ain't supposed to go to this nine to five. So what do you do? What is your brand about? What is Plump Queen? Well, Plump Queen came from, uh, in 2016, I was a part of a BBW group. Try to figure, try, try, try to figure what I was supposed to do. Now, it was presented to me, but, you know, you know, body empowerment, you know what I'm saying? And it was supposed to be almost like a sorority fraternity thing. Big mm -hmm. men, big women, having an organization, having fun together, and also doing community work. So mm -hmm. that was attractive to me. So I got the name Plump, which stands for Powerful Ladies United Making Progress. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to get the, you know, the female part together. The reality is they was just all a bunch of fat people who want to have sex with each other. And um, yeah, I'm just not, I've never been about that life. I don't knock them. I don't, I don't knock what you know, say what people do. But that, oh my like, God. Like, <laughs> like, even when my, <laughs> it's real. even when me and my king just only had a sexual relationship, I don't need a whole bunch of people to do that. I just need one person to handle their business and we're good. So that situation kind of dissolved itself, mm -hmm. but I still had that communal, let's, you know, let's, let's do this community thing. So I just started going live on Facebook and just giving my opinions about stuff about, you know, because I've always been sister soldier, black power and whatnot. So all of the um, subjects and current events that um, pretty much affected our community, I would speak on along with inspiring things about my arm and, you know, the things that I'm learning, you know, what I'm saying with, you know, with the situation. So then I did that for a few, I did that for like a year. And then my stepdad was like, yo, you need to turn this into a business, start your YouTube and get you a LLC. So that's what I did. Started my YouTube, started streaming to that. Um, he helped me get my LLC, my EIN number, do the whole, you know, the whole shebang. So that's how Amspire Media LLC was born. The show was Amspiration TTV. So that's my Amspiration is my play on inspiration. And TTV stands for Tell Truth Vision. Because I, I tell the truth. I'm all about this truth and facts and, and all of that. So then, um, and that's when 2019, so then 2020, the pandemic happened. So I kind of chilled out trying to figure out what's going on, how we fit in here. And then I was, and then just by accident, I was scrolling through Facebook and something popped on my um, screens talking about owning your own channel. Mm -hmm. Because my idea was to make the first black YouTube. That was what I had in my mind a place where we control our narrative. We don't have to worry about censorship because I'm very opinionated. And especially in the conscious community, we talk about a lot of controversial things. So I wanted a platform where we could express those things 
and that we own. Because like even with COVID was going on, you couldn't we couldn't put out certain information or it would be flagged, you know, or, you know, what I'm saying this is fake news and all this other things. And we were trying to give out good information to help people. So I wanted to build a platform where we didn't have to worry about that. So found this channel. So now I got a, a network on Roku TV. So if y'all got a Roku, a $24.99 at Walmart, go and get you one. And now I stream all of my podcasts. I have about four. And I'm also looking for um, content, you know, original content and other shows so we can be the next Netflix. Mm. That is the short version, you know what I'm saying, of that. Well, um, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to just throw my uh, <laughs> uh, I, uh, shout out there, you know, let me know how I can, you know, get on, you know, because mm. I, I definitely... Uh, like to inspire i definitely um i can do anything i actually i i was telling somebody well i told a couple people i got a um my love story <laughs> my relationship i'm going to make <laughs> i'm going to make a movie out of it hopefully tyler it's a tyler perry movie i just got to change the names and stuff but yeah it's definitely one of them so i de- that's definitely something like i've thought about being on tv and doing stuff but i'm like i i like to speak i like just put me in front of a crowd and let me talk and do my thing that way, or put me in front of a mic and a camera and do a podcast. I just, those are two things that I like um, to do, but yeah, I'm just shooting my shout out there to, you know, oh, however, no. however we can work together. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I am here for it. I'm here for it. We definitely talk afterwards because yes, I, I we want original content and I, I like this concept of being an underdog. I, I've definitely felt that way um, since I was nine. So yeah, I, this is what we want. And I also want to say this earlier, um, someone like you also inspired me, you know what I'm saying, after losing my arm. I went to high school with a gentleman, I'm going to throw his name out there, Ryan um, O'Neill, it was his name. He was born with um, with his hand missing. So mm-hmm. just this ball piece right here yeah. is all he had. But he was, he played basketball, you know what I'm saying? He had a regular high school life, you know what I'm saying? Girlfriends, popular, because he was on the sports team and all of that. And, you know, you wouldn't have thought, and he was born that way. You know what I'm saying? So when I lost my arm, he's one of the first people that came to my mind. So that actually helped me not even panic or, you know what I'm saying, or take this the wrong way, because it's like, well, this nigga was in high school shooting three pointers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And mind you, in high school when you're really trying to figure yourself out and peer pressure and you really don't know who you are, he navigated through that. Yeah. So if he can do that in high school, I surely can do this as a grown woman. So yeah. I, that inspired me and helped me be okay with my situation because I had that example. So yeah, I'm sure that yeah. pop, you possibly uh, are that person in someone else's life because it's like, well, shit, I got a longer reach than he do, but he out here, you know what I'm saying, you know, busting it down. So what excuse do I have? You know what I'm saying? You put the fight and you motivate people to kind of step their game up because yeah. if you're making an excuse, then how can they? Yeah, I, and I think some people don't realize that, like that be around you. Like it's like oh that person is normal, but it's like I ain't I'm normal, but I ain't normal because I got everyday challenges different than everybody else. But yeah, that was that like I look at that like I wonder like when I play basketball, do people get inspired like that play with me? That like how hard it is to play, and I don't have the hand, my wrist don't I don't got the wrist rotation. I like my like I had surgery and. My junior year of high school, on my right hand, I was predominantly right. So I had to switch to left hand. Like, it's all kind of stuff that, you know, you just had to make the adjustment. And you just, like, when my, yeah, you just had to, you just had to just keep going. Like, it's like, okay, I could give up. But what is that? That that don't solve nothing. That just, you know, I could be somebody that needs a nurse or whatever. It's like, ah, I'm good off that. I, I, I like living this life. I like living on my terms. And when you live on your terms, no matter what your disadvantage or your advantage is, life is better that way. Because, like, it's, it's a great thing to inspire somebody or go share your story and somebody see you months later. And be like, man, I remember you was at the detention center. I'd be like, dang, man, that was a minute ago. You remember me? And it's just that stuff makes it dope. Like, 
like I said, it took 30 years to figure this shit out. I'm like, okay, what and why? My God, what did I did I do something in the past life? Like, what did my, my mama do? My daddy, somebody who? Because there's nobody in my family. It's nobody that looks like me. That's another because that'll be a that'll be a whole nother podcast to talk about that. Because people, depending on what you believe, everything happens the way it's supposed to. As a matter of fact, we choose everything that happens to us even the most fucked up things. It's the hardest yep. concept to, to, to embrace, but once you do, it gives you so much control over your life. When you understand that you kind of chose this life, like I said, you come here for a reason. So you have to learn, you have to put yourself in the positions to learn what you need to learn. So whatever your troubles are, you need to learn from that so you can be who you're supposed to be. So... I had to lose my arm because I've always, like you said, I've always been my uh, advisor. They used to call me Mother Love as a kid. So I'm always that person people come to for advice. But people listen to me now, really, because I lost my arm. This almost gave me, um, wow. yeah, and validation. It's like, you know what? She done been through some shit and she still got a smile on her face. I can actually trust what she has to say, even if it's just shock value. Because you see me, you'll listen. You may not like what I say, but this is going to grab your attention. And that's all I need. All I need is to grab your attention because I can lead you to the water, but it's up for you to drink it. But my purpose is to lead you there. So I have to get your attention to do that. So this is why I have this platform and I use, I, I'm a amputee influencer and all of that stuff because you got to put it out there. There's a lot of people who want to, but they just need an example. They need to know that it's okay to be okay. And I kind of give that to them. You just helped me. <laughs> like, for real. When you said, like, um, people listen, you know, people always listen to me. But when you lost your arm and you have a shock value when they see you, it's like, okay, she done been through something. So when people look, I got to look at it like people see me like, okay, he done been through something. Some, some he about to tell us a crazy story or something because he definitely looked different. So now they listen. That's why kids listen. No matter, it might, you know, they might not like what I say, but they still going to listen because they like, okay, what he about to say? And then when I start talking and they like, uh oh, and I don't come in in no suit because don't ever, but don't, only time I put on a suit is a wedding or if I got to for an event, which I really don't want to. So I'm not, I'm coming like this. I might not come with this particular shirt because it's a DILF on it. But yeah, I'm coming just like this. And I'm talking to the kids because they're going to be like, oh, okay, he, he looked cool. And I didn't been places where kids like, man, you've been one of the best speakers. And I was just being myself. But it's, you just helped me with the, it's the shock value. It's the, he's been through something. He's about to tell us something. So let me at least listen to what he got to say. And that's for me to be like, okay, when I get in these rooms, people going to listen just because how I look. Now I got to really give it to them how I need to give it to them and not be like, oh, they looking at me because this. No, they looking at me because they like, okay, what buddy about to say? Yeah. So thank you. I, I thank you for that. Like That really just helped like, me understand speaking a little bit more. So I appreciate that. Um, what I do is what my, my purpose. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think, do I want to let you get some tips or if you want to? So I, I, another thing I like what you said before I, I'm, we just chit chat for a sec. Uh, you said you wanted to have like to have your own platform. Like, I love that. Like, I love where now us black people, we can have our own because some of the time people think, oh, sometimes you have your own, but it's under a, under something. Everybody on Netflix, okay, Netflix gave you something, but they getting a percentage. When you have your own own, it's yours. It's, and can't nobody, like one thing, Kevin Hart, He everything he do, he own. It ain't no, it's I'm getting this bread because they could take it from you. Like with musicians, your masters. Oh, we got your masters. Oh, I don't care if you was Prince. I don't care if you was such and such. We gonna keep this because you was one of the hottest things out. We gonna make this money off there. So just tripping about that. Beyonce used a song of hers, but because the Neptunes own it, ain't shit she can say about it. I don't care how enraged yeah. she is from a legal standpoint. Beyonce did not have to consult her in anything because that's not your song. Yeah, and it's like, man, you really can't be mad. 
I'm sorry you're not in the, you sorry you're not in the game like that and you you didn't succeed but don't be hold yeah you don't, don't be holding on my tail because you you didn't do stuff right that that ain't got nothing to do be with mad you. at the Neptunes because <laughs> yeah. and it happens like uh, there's another this rapper her name is Tokyo Vanity I think she did a little stint on Love and Hip Hop she made that song that's my best friend that's my best friend ah, you better well guess what uh Young Money Cash Money gave that song to Young Thugger she put that on um Insta uh YouTube. Got a whole bunch of views. They took the song, remixed it, copyrighted it, and then you got Young Thuggers. That's my best friend. That's my best friend. Big old booty bitches, sixty from Texas. Yeah, that ain't his. That was hers. Damn. It ain't nothing she can do about it because she didn't copyright. She didn't own the rights to the song. She just put it out there on YouTube. And you know why that is? Because when you from the hood, when you from around the way, they show you how to get money. They show you how to hustle, but they don't show you how to do business. Because guess what? If you got that paperwork, then make that paperwork. Because if she would have had that paper and they took it, oh, okay, y'all, go ahead, yeah. take it. She I'm going to get back. Fuck out of there, and she got paid. But you can't. That's like, wrong. people don't get that trademarking, copywriting, all that stuff. So, what, not to go long winded, but what made you decide to go that route for yourself? And for other people that look like you, like to have the idea of I want to create the, a black YouTube. Like people think of cre creating stuff, but sometimes it's not create something like that. So where did that come from with the mindset? Yeah, I've always been Harriet Tubman, sister soldier to my, you know, to my heart. I've just always wanted, you know, better for my people. You know, even in elementary school, my elementary school, even though we grew up in the projects, it was all black from the principal on down. So we learned about slavery. We learned about black culture and you know what I'm saying? So I learned about myself at a very young age. So I got to see, you know what I'm saying? The differences and you know, how our community is run. So I want to make a difference. You know, I have a voice. I have no problem with using it. So I've always, since I got into consciousness, I've always been that way. So I figured I can blend, you know what I'm saying? My platform you know, to be able to do that because I'm not just, um, I'm not an anti-white person. I, I just got my, I just got my license today. You know what I'm saying? And a 64 year old white woman is the reason why I got it. You know what I'm saying? That's my auntie. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care how big, bliggity black I am. That's my white auntie right there. So I, I'm elevating myself as far as, cause I resonate with souls and people, but mm. I live in this world. And the fact is, in our community, there's a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying, that needs to be fixed. I'm big on account, I'm big on truth and accountability. You need to understand what the problem is. Yes, white people did this. Yes, the government does this, and this is how it's set up. But we as black people need to be accountable now. You know what I'm saying? For our actions and how we feed in to, you know what I'm saying, this system. The system is what it is. We gotta maneuver around it. So I want us as a whole to be better because you're me and I'm you. Just like every other culture has their thing. The Asians got their thing. The Arabs got their thing. White folk got their thing. I just want us to have our thing. I want us to have our own tables. We don't need your tables. Because to be quite honest, we've been building your tables. See what I'm saying? So keep the table. You're welcome. But let us have our own shit. Let us have our own platforms. Let us have our own businesses. Let us, let, you know what I'm saying? And every time we try to do that in the, few, in, in, um, in the past, they've destroyed it. Every time there was a black, there were several um, cities where there was black wealth and they destroyed those places. So I want to do something about that. I, I, I want to build a place where they can't do that. And I'm willing to be in the forefront of it. I, I love it. I love what you said. You don't, you, we, I don't really get into politics. I don't really get into what's going I mean, I, you hear what's going on in the world, but it's not going to change. I mean, it'll get better as time goes on, but it's not going to change. I grew up in the neighborhood I grew up in was all white. It was a small percentage, but it wasn't like, it was some white people that got money or some white people live like us. And so, like you said, it's about soul. It's about character. It ain't about a color. Because I, you could put me in a room with everybody diverse and everybody be like, oh, yeah, buddy, cool as hell. 
because I'm I'm cool with everybody. I'm that's just me. I you could set me in a room with older white men and I'm gonna talk to them. You can set me in with older black men, a rap, whatever, women. It don't matter because I because when you're yourself, you connect with people, yeah. and that's where we gotta be. As our culture, we want to be like such and such. We want to be like that. You could be yourself. You could hang out. I think it's like, so you got somebody that's the rapper. You don't want to be the cameraman because that, oh, that make you look, you know how much cameraman when they really, they make, or you don't want, oh man, I ain't trying to post on social media. You, oh, okay. You, we don't want to, we don't want to be Scottie Pippen. Everybody want to be Michael Jordan, but. We don't nobody want to be unity. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. And, and it's been taught. We, we have not been taught. We. Everybody yeah. wants to be on top, not understanding when you look at a pyramid, the, the top of the, of the pyramid is the smallest piece. The biggest part of it is the base. And you got to understand, like, even if in war and family, everybody has their place, it's not higher or lower. It's just like a machine, like this computer, you know, we're on. You take one of those little cogs or whatever the fuck's out of it, this computer's going to shut down. No matter how high techy it is, when you take the piece out, it no longer works. So every piece is, you know what I'm saying? It's intricate, especially in our families. We want to, you know, not to say nothing. I know the man's supposed to be the head of the household, but being the head of the household is not just the be all, end all and be all. You still got a spine. Your head can't do nothing without your spine. So that's all needed for your body to stand up straight. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we cut things off and all that, but guess what? My body is off balance because this ain't here. I can finagle around it, but the reality is, you know what I'm saying? It's not the same. So everybody just needs to play their part. Everybody's not so, not everybody's supposed to be an entrepreneur. Not everybody can, you know, can deal with being, a, not everybody's a leader. You know what I'm saying? Leaders and followers have their place. That doesn't make the followers bad because guess what? A leader needs somebody to follow, needs need somebody to lead. Exactly. So everything complements each other, especially with love. Men and women, ma'at. That's why I deal with African spirituality. I deal with balance. We stand next to each other. We are complements of each other. A man can't do what a woman do and a woman can't do what a man do. And we ain't supposed to. Both of our, you know, positions are important and we just need to cultivate that. Well, we're all trying to compete with each other. And that comes from slavery and the, the way, like I said, the way this country is run and what, what our perspective on success is. It all molds that. So I want to build a platform where we change all that shit. I love it. I love it. So I need three tips. Um, three tips for the people that feel like something in their life just tragically happened and they don't know what the hell to do. They don't know where to go forward or go backwards. You know, it could be lost a job, lost an arm, leg, got shot, family member died because everything resonates to itself. Um, what are three tips that people, when they listen to this episode, they could be like, all right, I can do that. And it'll help them, you know, move the needle. All right. Well, one, Spiritual grounding. I don't care what it is. If it's religion, God, Buddha, your mom and your daddy, whatever it is, spiritual grounding, having some connection to a source. You know what I'm saying? It's most important. It, it, it brings your morals. It brings your values. You know what I'm saying? It gives you something to hold on to. That's why I called it grounded. So some type of spiritual grounding. Um, I will say for number two is be kind with your, to yourself. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. You know what I'm saying? When things go, when things go wrong, you know what I mean? That whole failure and self doubt and all that, that stops you from it, from able, from being able to find a solution to what you got going on. So be patient and be kind, you know what I'm saying? To yourself and realize that everything happens for a reason. That's that's the biggest thing. That should be that's 1.1, 2.1, and three. Everything, I don't care what it is, happens for a reason. So if you can pinpoint that reason, you can control that situation. I love it. I I love like you said, everything happened for a reason. 
I'm thinking, I'll be thinking when I'm listening, what I want to name an episode. That might be, that's somewhere in there. I got to put that somewhere. I don't know if it'll be just on a quote or if it's going to be the name of it. Because I always want something that people can be like, what the hell he about to talk about today? I always try to make it a something. But who knows? I love those tips, though. Like, everything does happen for it. don't matter good, bad, ugly. Trust me. I know everything happens for a reason. Everything. And you can think it's the worst thing to happen. But you look at maybe a few months, a year later, or a few years later, and you'll be like, damn, that's why that happened back then. So before we get into how people can reach you and you giving us a quote, um, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being on. Thank you for being the person that you are. Thank you for being a successful underdog. Like, you're a dope person. Um, your story is super dope, like, because I know people that's been in situations where they have some type of disability and life different or an accident happened and they gave up. They looked at it all wrong and they became a victim and they wanted everybody to help them. They wanted to be, Oh, this happened to me. This, you know, woe is me. And you didn't do that. He was like, all right, I just got to make the adjustment and get it going. And now you're inspiring people all over the world. And that's super dope. So I just wanted to say that I always try to give my guests their flowers um, because I try to get dope people. I don't really try to get, you know, nobody that's not dope, but everybody come on, you know, but you're dope. I love your story. I love what you do. And I love your uh, your vision <clears throat> for what you want to do. What's going to happen for you? I'm going to say that. Whatever is going, you know, whatever your vision is that you just said, that's going to happen for you. So um, I need a quote. I don't know if it's your quote. It could be a quote you've seen. It could, you know, Whatever, but I need a quote from you. Need a quote. Okay. Love is a service. Serve yourself first. I wish you would have already said how people can reach out to you because I would have ended it right there. Oh, my goodness. And oh, I just made that up oh. on the top of my head. I just made that up. Oh, oh that's fine. You better take, you better, I, I, yeah, I take am the, not sure that. Man. I make my yeah. own memes, and I sure do. That's a oh, that's yeah. Amazing. I'm definitely, I'm definitely gonna put that as a quote for this episode and drop that because that that was heavy. So let people know how they can reach out to you, how they can um, see more about you, find out more about you, or how they can work with you. All right. Well, you can find me on all social media sites. Uh, my link tree, y'all know the beginning of the link tree is amp a m p inspiration s p i r a t i o n TTV, Linktree, Amspiration TTV. That will get, take you to my Facebook, which is Amspire Media Houston. That'll take you to my TikTok, which is Amputee 9 Evolution. That'll take you to my IG, which is 9 Plump 9 Queen 9. If you have Roku, if, go to Amspire Media Network, download it for free right now. If you don't have one, go to Walmart, spend $24.99 and get you one. You can catch me on Twitter. At Ampspire Media Network. And if you are a content creator or if you have a business that you would like, you know what I'm saying, to advertise on any of our podcasts, you can email us at ampspirecontent999 at yahoo.com. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you you heard it, how you can get there. All that's gonna be in the show notes. Um once this episode drops, I can't wait for this episode to drop. Um, how you can reach me is Underdog Talk and pod, uh, Underdog Talk podcast on all social media, YouTube, um, IG, Twitter. Well, Twitter, you put it in there, and I'm sure I'll come up. I forgot what my Twitter name. I gotta remember. I tried to switch it over. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what else I got? YouTube, Facebook, all that. Any um, platform. Except for, you know, I ain't on TV. I ain't on Roku like some people. I Anchor. Ain't. You should be on Anchor. I'm on I am. Anchor. I'm on Anchor. So any any uh, podcast platform that you listen to, audio, um, I'm on that. And Underdog Talk Podcast at Gmail if you got good, bad, ugly, whatever you want. You know, give me feedback. If you want to find out more about a guest or if you want to be a guest or know somebody that can be a guest, that's how you can reach me. Um, so before we get out of here, you got any closing words? 
yes, you should in the future see Underdog um, Talk podcast on Amspire Media Network. We're going to speak that into existence. And on that note, peace, one love.